Okay, um, this is just catching up with, uh, with uh, things uh, in, in church, just to just keep up in touch with everybody. And um, well, let's begin with a word of prayer together. Our Father, we pray that you will help us to always see your hand guiding, helping us to develop the way we should be going. We pray that you will teach us deep lessons of faith and of trust in you. And we pray that you will help us to grow our church the way we want to, the way we should. And so we pray for encouragement to our hearts in all the things that we seek to do. And we pray for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, just to uh, help you to be a little bit updated as to what's happening on the, in the IPC family. Uh, <clears throat> last week, I went to apply for, as usual, for a renewal of visa, get a new visa for India. And then on Monday, the embassy called up and then they said, we want to see you. I said, okay. And on Tuesday, they call up again, we want to see you again. Oh, please. <laughs> What's wrong? So then they, uh, they, they informed me, he said, um, <clears throat> you are not allowed to do uh, any church work at all in India. So then on Saturday, I read a newspaper report that there has been a lot of uh, very, um, a lot of negative uh, inclinations towards Ministry of Church in India under the President Modi government. So they wrote back and they said, Pastor, if you come, they will let you in, but uh, they will send spies into our churches and uh, they will creep in and they will give us a lot of trouble. <clears throat> so we're seeing churches in Bangalore actually being burned. Uh, we're seeing in Bihar the most because it's minority also being attacked and burnt. So it's pretty widespread. A part of the problem is actually the, the fact that this present government, Modi, is actually supported. He's only in power because of the very strong Hindu, militant Hindu groups. They're really propping him up. Because if the gurus are going to tell the voters to vote, at one shot they can bring in a million devotees to vote. So if you don't listen to them, you're in trouble because they pull off their vote, they go to the other side, you lost it. So everybody knows that they are being... But so far, they have never been involved in the, in the South, mostly in the North and in the West, but not, not, in, the, not in, the, uh, in the Southern part. So when Modi wanted to come over to Chennai, <coughs> Tamil Nadu, the then former chief minister, J.L. Lalita, who's passed on, snubbed him, won't even receive him at the airport. So this present new chief minister is quite different because he knows he's new and uh, needs his support. So he's, he's coming into that side. So at this point of time, it's, it's going to be a bit, a bit tricky. So um, I've had to uh, cancel uh, two more visits to India on August and in October, and I'm um, not sure whether it will go on. There is a general election in 2019. That's what we're hoping. If they can bring back the Congress party, you see the problem is who is more corrupt? And uh, it's, it's, which one is just a question of where the corruption level is. So uh, it's, it's been tough. We have not been able to send funds in at all easily. The banks, uh, state of Indian banks, uh, refused to honour checks. Cannot. So we had to bring an accountant in to make sure that the funds and all. He says, "Yeah, you can come. You can come and you can personally give funds, but you cannot send any funds any other way." Well, that's crazy yeah. to travel down there to give funds. Yeah. I mean, the cost is what well, the cost of travelling is there. Then you go to stay in the hotels is going to be there, so that we can give him some money. This doesn't make sense, and and they know it. So they are right now really uh, being, I mean, everybody is just wondering what on earth is happening. But it's, it's becoming more and more common. <clears throat> they will go to church and then they will take Bibles and they burn. 
sort of, I defy you. What are you going to do? They can't. So what the police people would do is to come in after the burning is over. Oh, what happened? Oh, we'll catch the people. And the case is filed. That's it. Nothing, no action will be taken. <laughs> the fellow could be looking and smirking away. And uh, they're not going to do anything. Well, so I told the people, I said, we've been there 29 years already. It's time for them to stand up, to be counted. They've got to, to be there. I think this is the great challenge. You know, I think this is something we all often take for granted that. You know, the church would remain where it is. We can do things as normally as possible. That's not true. I mean, that, that's, that's something that we want to uh, really, really appreciate. It's just something that we cannot take for granted. Um, even, uh, you know, they, they can trump up charges, just like one, the Jakarta the governor, the Ahok. Same. They charge him with, uh, you know, you are speaking blasphemy against, uh, against Allah and all that. And uh, you are against... Uh, and he lost his position as, as governor, just like that. So, I mean, let's, let's face it. Um, you know, we, we are facing difficulties along the way. And uh, you never know uh, how things will be. You know, we just can't get into... So Myanmar, the same thing. Uh, right now, it's okay. But there is a very strong militant uh, you know, Buddhist group, and I think that uh, they have been trying to push the government. And these are the ones who are against the Rohingya, for example. The, the, the people who are doing this, partly government, but post, partly because of this, uh, you know, they are very, very anti uh, a lot of things, un unfortunately. Now, I think that when we look at uh, you know, how church would develop, and I, I think that I, I want to share with you or how can we make sure that our church will be able to survive and will be able to cope with all the challenges which are there? I think that must be our concern, our goal. How can we be that church that we will, you know, will be able to say, okay, this is where we are. Can, how can we be that church? And uh, that's, that's what we want to, to look at. So this is a uh, situation. And, you know, let's, let's trust the Lord for these things here. So I, I really want to uh, encourage you to look at how we can... See, at the end of the day, the kind of church that we are going to be, to have, does not depend upon an external force. It does not depend on our visits. Look, we're only there for a few visits anyway. It's not that we are going to be there forever. It's just that we own once in there or two. I'm, I go a bit more often than Pastor Chris does. I go there about four times a year, for example. Every two, three months. They restrict first, last time, any time. Then they restrict uh, only once in two months. Now they further restrict, okay, you can come in, but you cannot, uh, you cannot speak at the churches. So I, I'm not going to just go down there to give them funds. There are other ways of doing, spending the time and, and, and the energy. So this would be challenging. The question is, what should the church be? What can the church become? Well, this is a series of things that I want to share with you uh, so that you know, we will just, just seek to strengthen our hearts, ourselves, in every way possible so that when we look at our faith and our life, uh, you know, we can say, well, this is the church we want to become. And the church doesn't have to be caught up with all kinds of controversy. It doesn't have to get caught up with all kinds of things. And I think this is important. So I, I want to share with you uh, how we developed Bethany right from the start. Right? There were, well, one, the main book was Start Up was the book of Acts. So then we look at all the churches, you know, the Church of Jerusalem, and then the model we took was part of Jerusalem, part of Antioch, and then part, in part, Philippians. So there were three churches that literally became uh, uh, models for us to consider. One, the Jerusalem church, because of the very, very strong... It was the first church anyway. So the, the focus on evangelism, developing of the church ministry, Acts 2, Right? Then the Antiochian church, the church in Antioch, Pisidia. But well, this was a church that sent out missionary work, 
set up missionary, Paul, Barnabas, went up. Right? And then this is the church at Philippi. Now, this church is what we're going to study tonight. And I, I think this is... So this gives us a pretty good idea as to how we all can be impacted. I think it's everywhere it's the same. What kind of church do we want to be? Well, let's say, let's say this is Bethel. What kind of church do we want to be? And that is something that you have to do to be. You see, very much depends upon Bethel. Not on God. Don't, don't blame God. He's got given us a startup already. Right? The startup will be the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, the leaders which are there, and so on. What the church finally becomes depends on us. What's our focus? What's our challenge? What do we want to see done? And when we pursue it along this line, it really will help a lot. So I want to share with you, this is something that we work on. and uh, It's not an easy thing to do, but, you know, let's try anyway. So tonight, I would like to take up Monday and then, uh, sorry, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. On Thursday, a slight new twist. Okay? I would like very, very much to do. You, we still can come, but I will be using the Thursday night to equip people who would like to be involved in the teaching, in the sharing of the Sunday, of, of uh, you know Bible lessons, so it's suitable for if you are a Sunday school teacher. But even if you are not a Sunday school teacher, can I take this and share with other people more effectively? Well, that's what we want you to do, right? So there a lot of us just sit down there and wait for things to happen. That's why they say there are three types of people, three groups of people: those who make things happen, those who watch things happen. Those who don't know what happened. <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> I think that, that's what we don't want to be. We don't want to end up, actually, what happened? I mean, it's ridiculous to, to look at life and say, I don't know what happened. We, I, I, mean, I, I don't want to see. I just don't want to. I'm not, I'm not a spectator sport person. You see, our faith is never a spectator sport. It's something you want to, to work with. If it is real, if it is true, if it is wonderful, do something about it. That is the challenge of it all. And that's what we want to do. Right? So this is the, uh, the whole point of this Bible study from here onwards. And I'm going to try, you know, rather than to say, listen, this is a word that is inspiring. I would rather share with you that, you know, you can become the church. We all can become. Make battle what it is. If we work at it. And this is what we'd like us to do. And then along the way, look at our church anniversary and say, that's our focus. And we want to see this, and we're all part of the whole thing, and this is what we want to do. Okay? Well, let's take a look at the notes tonight. Uh, <clears throat> right, let's take a look at... Uh, and we're looking at, the, at Paul's epistle to the Philippians. Um, and this is something that, that we really want to... Uh, okay? So what is it that the book of uh, Philippians or the epistle to the Philippians, what is it all about? And I think that is important for us uh, to look at. And I think this is something that we want to consider. In, in any church, in Philippians 1, it's always made up of things like that. Okay, So let's look at Philippians 1. And this, this is... Uh, a word that is interesting to uh, look at, very carefully study. Okay? Um, there will always be in any church setup, these are the usual things. Okay? So Paul writes to the Philippines, and he was there only for a short while. The background to uh, Philippians is the book of Acts 16. Right? So Paul wanted to go over to Asia Minor to develop the, the place further, and the Lord said, stop, no. Right? He went to Iconium. That's a Lyconia area. And uh, that's basically Asia Minor. So Paul, I, I want to go explore the further. He said, stop, you've done enough there. Somewhere else needs you. So it was there that he went over to this place, and, and we call this the Macedonian call. But let's look at Acts 16. So that we'll see how it develops. <clears throat> right, let's look at Acts 16. And, 
Okay, we'll see how it works. Um, X16. Right? So here we go. He came to uh, Derby and Lystra. And then when they went to the region of Galatia uh, to preach the word in Asia Minor. Now, the Asia Minor is actually this whole area, Galatia, Cappadocia, Lyconia, uh, this is the area that, that's there. <clears throat> and um, so the Lord said, nope. Uh, and then he waited and there was, um, there was a word. Okay? And this was where we came over to Mysia, they came to Troas, and this was where the vision of uh, men of Macedonia, this is what we call, sometimes we call this a Macedonian call, right? And so come over and, and, and help us. So they said they knew the Lord was there. So we went over there and, uh, okay, to Philippi in verse 12, okay? So 16, 12, and that is Philippi. Now that is the background of it. It was a, the formal city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And uh, they were there in the city uh, for uh, some days. Right? So this is how they began a ministry. And uh, they met a few people. And one of them was called Lydia. Now, Lydia was a seller of purple. Now, she was a business lady. Now, you don't get to sell purple, you know, just purple. To us, it's nothing. Okay? Now, to sell purple is to tell you that she has a niche ministry or rich work. Because nobody will buy purple except royalty. It's expensive. And the only people who are royal high rank would be allowed to wear purple. Just like in, in, in ancient China. You know, the golden yellow and uh, the dragon cannot be used except the royal family. Well, purple was that color. You cannot do that until you are very wealthy. Uh, so therefore, she became, um, you know, a very successful uh, lady there. And the Lord opened her heart to hear the things. So when she and her household were baptized, uh, she says, if you judge me to be faithful... It, Come to the Lord, come to my house and stay with us. So, first convert, Lydia. Right? And uh, so, there, there is home one. Okay, so this is Lydia. Uh, this is the business uh, lady that's there. Um, she uh, came to believe, was baptized, and then straight away she opened her home. Now, that is the kind of stuff that we need to see in members. So, there is Paul. There is Silas, there is Timothy, small team, three. So, you see, the work of the Lord is never just about leaders alone. It's the kind of people that make up the church. Right? And we don't know very much about Lydia, but there she is. <clears throat> so, she begins by saying, let me open up a home. So, they, of course, in the early days, if you don't have anybody open up a home, You've got to rent a place. They don't have a hotel, no holiday in. Yeah. In those days. Okay, you've got to, you know, and there she is. And that saved them a huge bundle of, of support funds. Right? And so she says, listen, if you think me faithful, see the key word, let me be found faithful. These are the people whose hearts the Lord opened. Watch for these important phrases. We start here, and in any kind of church, you need to see this. The set of leaders must be there, sent from the Lord. They will be there to preach the word, right? But please remember, you know, no matter how wonderful a preacher, Pastor Chris may be, one person. You need the whole church, and that is the focus. So Philippi, uh, over here in Acts 16, we learn vital lessons about what, uh, you know, the ministry of the Lord. The Lord will open hearts and He will cause that person to do the things for the Lord. 
right? So you, you just got to be, and that is something that you really want to ask yourself, can I be that person? Can I be the person whose heart the Lord will open? That's important. Can I be, see, one, that's the Lord's part. You, his part is to, okay, let me touch your heart. The question is, what do you do next? Please do not imagine that it's always the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. No, there is the Lord's part. Then there's a response part. Right? So you cannot have simply say, well, the Lord opened the ways. You've got to step in. The question is whether we have that kind of heart. Right? So this is one. And it is, that is a key word here. If we see a person is faithful and that becomes a faithful uh, to the Lord, come to my house, stay. And so she persuaded us. Now that is your your, your part. So let's take a look at the leaders first. <clears throat> and then let's take a look at the people who are. And this is where Timothy comes in. And we need this. Right? So uh, let's look at um, Acts 16. And then we see how the Lord led people. Right? So here is a much younger man. That's Timothy. Okay? Chapter 16, the first part of it. One well spoken of by the brethren. At Lystra. Okay, so first test, uh, you know, Timothy, we're going to work with the Jews. If you, if they find out you're not even circumcised, your ministry has already ended before it begins. And Timothy understood that, accepted it, and said, "Okay, I will uh, be uh, circumcised." And then they were there. Right. So that's what they did. The churches were strengthened in the faith. It increased in numbers daily. So they went to the area. So Timothy was along there. And they sailed from one place to another. Quite a lot of traveling, actually. And then they were sitting in a, staying in a city for, for some days. And then Lydia comes in. So home base is there. Any time is there. Now that is just really, really kind of special. Right? So this is something that we want to uh, look at. And the, the church, this is how the church in Philippi began. So then, of course, uh, they heal somebody, they cast them a demon uh, from somebody, and then um, there is the authority and there was power there. Now, for that effort, they went to jail. And then we see Paul and Silas was praying and singing hymns to God. Now, obviously, Timothy is too young and too small a fry for them to just put into jail. What is that? Ah, nothing. So he escaped going to jail. But Paul and Silas, obvious leaders, can't, can't mistake them. And uh, of, uh, they, you know, they went to jail. Right? And they were there, one praying, two singing. Now, a lot of people would be cursing. I mean, that's how it is. But no, no cursing, no swearing, no grumbling, no complaining. At midnight. Okay, so every time you feel you cannot sleep at night, too much pain, too much problem, what should you do? Try. <laughs> Auntie Mary, try. Get up, pray, sing. Wake up, Uncle Sunny. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, this actually <laughs> happened, you know. I remember one fellow, he came in, uh, he was... Uh, he said, I, my father is a church elder. I've been church all my life since I was a baby until now. And uh, he says, but I don't know what you're talking about. So I said, you need to be born again. So what do you mean by that? I'm already a Christian. I said, I don't think so. So he came to know the Lord. And then what happened? He says, I don't know, but I'll think about it anyway. In the middle of the night, at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, he woke up. And suddenly he found himself happy. So what did he do? At 3 o'clock, he began to sing all the old uh, Sunday school songs that he learned uh, when he was a kid. So everybody thought he had, you know, probably maybe possessed or something like that. You know, what is wrong with you? What are you doing? It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And he says, you cannot tell me that I am crazy because I am not. I am just happy. I cannot tell you, but I just really want to be singing and praying. See, this is how they, look, look at 
Look at how we are seeing. These are characteristics which all of us can develop. Okay, number one, faithfulness, right? Two, um, here we are. Listen, let me offer something. It could be something, anything. Let me offer my help. Uh, my house in this case here, right? Since she's wealthy, she said, listen, uh, I, I'm happy to, to devote my funds over here. By the door. Right? So Paul and Silas, on the, these are leaders. Now, this is important. Leaders, these are our expectations. Very, very important. Please, let's be faithful and exercise that faith, right? Be there. Be precious. Go ahead. Dare to do things. Be people of prayer. Sing. Now, we don't know that Paul can sing. Well, now we know. You mean Paul was a singer too? Yes. Now, I think this is something. that Can we sing in the midst of everything? In America, there was a lady who, you know, she was not famous initially. She was trying to get into the second tier opera house when she began to sing. Her thief pen, I mean, a voice used to tell her, no, you are destined for singing in opera. And America said, nope, 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 for years. Finally, she went over to Europe instead. And there she was an overnight success. And so America opened the doors and home. And then she was hailed. She was built with a former past, you know, all one was men, Enrico Caruso. I don't know whether you know Caruso. Caruso is a singer who they say he can expand the chest. You put the grand piano next to him, he breathes, the piano moves. That is, his set of lungs is just absolutely amazing. They call him the great Caruso. Opera singer. And I've heard Kim Dabi sing it. I'm absolutely amazing. A movie was made about his life. The, woman, the, the feminine counterpart was this lady. And she had a hectic schedule. People don't know about her life. <coughs> One, you know, uh, Martha's Vineyard was actually hers years ago. And it burned down. Beautiful home. And then husband suffered a stroke. For the next eight years, she devoted her life looking after him. People did not know that she had looked after two severely disabled special needs children. This month is special needs in the, uh, children uh, for a ministry in, in, in Singapore. So I've just been reading about people with special needs, what kind of parents they have, what kind of help they, can, they would need. And this was a mother who spent so much, every time she's not in a concert somewhere, a total devotion to a husband who is sick. And there, two disabled children whom she brought up personally. See, that's what we need. That's our faith in the Lord in the real sense of the word. Right? So there are difficulties. There are setbacks. What should we do? Two things we want to choose. One, I want to pray. Two, I want to sing. Why can't we do that? See, our first reaction very often in life, I don't like it. Why? Why do we need to complain? Are we going to see this? You, you, as you, is anything too hard for the Lord? You, you're going to see this. Moses complained. The people complained. And once you start complaining, you know what? The spirit of complaint will never leave you. Don't even let it start. And that's what we wanted to do and develop in Bethany. Let's not develop a complaining spirit as in never. Let's pray. Let's choose to sing instead so we get a strong choir. Right? Every time you feel quite complaining, join the choir, sing. And it helps a great deal. And I'm serious about these things here. The problem is that we allow ourselves to complain all the time. Look, 
Paul can say, well, Lord, you sent me to be a missionary. I go here and end up in jail. Nope. Now, God has a purpose for you there, Paul. Guess what? The Philippine jailer is going to be safe that night. On what basis? When you are able to, uh, to really sing and be able to preach. Now, this was a... In Singapore, we used, churches used to be allowed to do radio ministry. That, before they closed it. It used to be on Sunday evening, for half an hour, different church pastors would be allowed to be there to speak. That was my last message on Acts 16. I, I was actually preaching from this one over here. Yeah, so that was my last, and I said, okay, and they may close it anyway. So uh, the last time it was Singapore, they allowed, uh, you know, uh, radio preachers. So I don't know why they allowed those. I was, I was, one, of, <laughs> was one of them. So the, my last message was actually Act 16. Was this one? You know, this is where we choose. Instead of complaining and grumbling and swearing and cursing and being angry, let's do the Christian thing. Choose, pray, sing. And this is what we want to try. To do. This is what we develop over years. Can we develop this? Yes. Well, we have leaders who are like that. Right? This is absolutely important. You know, you can lose it if you're not careful. Now, I know I met with him. I know this fellow was uh, he's a, he's a medical doctor uh, you know, of, of great repute in his time. And uh, he, he used to just, you know, I, sometimes I see him in the clinic and help people, bring people to his clinic. And, and uh, you know, always hearing, wow, he's whistling, he's happy, you know. <sighs> Become very successful, drives a big Mercedes, you know, and, uh, you know, well-known person and all that. And uh, just so tired. The joy is gone. Be careful, you can lose it. You can really, really, you can choose. And I think so they, they ask her, what is your secret? And this is her answer. He says, I cannot understand. I do not choose the circumstances of my life. I can't choose. But I can choose to be joyful. Praying, singing are all choices we make. How do you want to make? I'm going to choose. I mean, this is important. Right? I read one funny story of a, a, a Chinese man who came to know the Lord. And his wife was so angry. How dare you become a Christian in a family and scolded him and so and so forth. I'm not going to wash your clothes anymore. So he says, no problem. I wash my own clothes. So he had learned a song. What can wash away my sin? <laughs> so he, he sang the song. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The wife got so irritated with him. What well, everything, you know, so, uh, you know, but cooking and, and uh, says, well, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He will always find a Bible verse or two, sing that song in the midst of all the troubles. I say, wow, I really like that spirit. Can we do that? I mean, this is important, right? So we, it's a matter of our choosing. I mean, it's better. One of our telling Pastor Chris on the way here, one of our pastors there, you know, he inherited a small hut from his parents. And then, no, I've been to, I've been to those kind of not great things, you know. And then he said, in a rainstorm, the hut went flat. If completely, it was destroyed. And he said, Pastor, they called me, so I took my motorcycle and went down there. I watched my old house; it's gone. I said, nobody's staying there, right? He said, yeah. Said, oh, that's why nobody stays there. So why are you weeping? Why were you? I'd be so glad. First, cannot live there. Two, is collapse. It saved you trouble from sending a demolition team to, to pay them to, to get it. Why are you upset? He said, then I have nothing to give to my son. You want to give that to your son? <laughs> You see, he inherited from his grandparents. His grandparents stayed there. His father stayed there. Now is his. How that house can last three generations is to me quite amazing. You know, if somebody sneezes too loudly, the house may come down, or at least half the wall will come down. 
It was just not stable. Why are you upset? He brought some of the bricks home. <laughs> Maybe for sentimental value, but <laughs> why would you want to bother? But of course, he's, he's saying you, you cannot leave a house vacant in that area. You've got to go and build something with it. Oh, he said, sometimes it's a, we don't realize it. It's a matter of choice. Right? Bethany is what it is because of choice. As leaders, we choose to be happy. We choose to be praying. We just concluded a spiritual retreat. You know, yes, on, on Friday and Saturday. About 255 people turned up. And we read the scriptures from morning to night on Saturday. Friday night, and then on Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, right up to 6.30, we just... Listen, let's just read the Lord's Word. We do that by choice. We can choose. I cannot choose what's going to happen to me. You cannot choose your relatives, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, you cannot choose your face. But you can choose do what, you, what you do with your life. You can choose. And you know what? I, and I, I look at Paul. There's no wonder he became God's special servant. Look at him. Right? First trip. This is the second trip. And he just stood up. Okay, Timothy, uh, you don't have to be jailed. We are going in. You know, we are going. Imagine being flogged. Imprisoned. Right? Shackles on the hands and the feet. And they can sing. Anytime you have people like that, you know God is going to use them mightily. Conversely, you know why people, God will not use some people? We're not praying. We're not singing. We are unhappy. We are choosing to, why? I am not going to be. I mean, this is important, right? So how, how can we make sure that this is not going to happen to us? Well, as we read, and we are, we are just impacted, and we are just so really impressed. Can we be? Yes. And I, I think this is something that we really, really want to consider. Okay? So let's take a look at this here. At midnight, imagine. And then the keeper asked, and he said, you know, and then he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they spoke the word of the Lord to him. That is important. Imagine, at any time of the day, the word of the Lord came, and that's what it is. And they found joy. That's what you want to see. When the Word of God really comes into our hearts and to our lives, there will be that joy, if that faith, that faith is there. So I tell the Indian brethren, please don't be overly upset. See, if they're overly upset because I'm not there, because they receive extra gifts here and there, that's the worst possible reason. The reason for us is to listen, the Lord is going to open, close one chapter, begin a new one. How should we take it? With joy, with faith, with trust, with singing in our heart. Okay, now we've learned so many lessons already. Let's move on. That must be our faith. Rather than to say, oh dear, close doors, what shall we do? No, don't. I've been supporting one Kenyan young man to go to university. He's going to become a pastor. Uh, so he wrote to me, he says, Pastor, can you come over to Kenya? Because uh, I'm graduating. Can you be there? I'll be the only Chinese person there in the graduation <laughs> service. So you're only allowed to bring uh, one or two people there to, you know, to see the graduation. He says, can you come? I said, no, I'll be here in Perth. Unless you don't want me here, then I go that side. <laughs> but you know, to him it's just such a joy. I said, no, don't worry. Just do it. Why not? You don't have to be there physically to rejoice with the person. I wrote back and said, I, I, I can't be there because I've got to be here instead. And you just go. Right? You see, there is so, there are so many reasons for us to be happy. So in the last three years, I have supported him in times when the famine, in times when he was asking, please pray for me, because election time is dangerous. People get killed in election in Kenya. Right? So he says, we pray for this is the election time. So, okay, now it's safe and it's, it's tough. And he has, he has gone through quite a bit. And he's one of the better students there. Well, that, that's good. We're glad for him. Now we're going to begin a new ministry 
said caveat. I think that's something we want to do. You see, the Word of God is going to go on. We'll do our part. But remember, the local people will have to do their part too. And that is the challenge. Right? So we have Lydia. We have Philippian jailer. Now, the first few members of the church, boy, what, have, what kind of thing is that? We are looking at one wealthy, one jailer. Right? So the whole family uh, came to know the household, household. See, you want to know what it is, the best place to be, the best place to witness is in your household. Keep praying. Be that witness. Okay? Be different. Tell them there's something. Look at my life. I'm happy. And you can't fault that. You really, really can't fault that. And uh, so there we go. Okay? So they didn't stay very long. They were asked to leave. That's it. Bye. So how many, how long were they in Philippi? Not much. Right? And so when you look at the Philippians, then you are absolutely amazed. Right? If fish in Ephesus, three years. In Corinth, uh, 18 months. Right here. We don't know how long, but I can tell you it's not very long. Okay? Over there, Lydia's family. Okay, one. Over out there, go at the, at the riverside. Uh, and then that, this happened. Healed the lady who, who, was, uh, you know, who had a, was possessed by an evil spirit. Went to jail. And then they left. That's it. So if you were to ask about it, Philip Jesus must be a wonderful church. Maybe Paul taught them many things. You know, actually it's not true. It's not how much they are being taught. It's how much they have caught. What have we caught of the faith in the Lord? That is the challenge. And they caught the spirit of Paul. And it's very, very obvious. Right? So if you really want to catch somebody's faith, spirit, uh, you watch. These are the things we want to take a look at. But let's look at Philippians 1 now. Uh, let's let's uh, see this uh, very, very carefully. Okay? We have Paul. We have Apophis. And of course, Silas is to be included, but he's not mentioned over here. So by the time Silas has gone to another ministry, so what is now left behind would be simply uh, these three people now, and Timothy. So I'm going to just focus on uh, the Apostle Paul tonight and look at Philippians 1 and uh, look at the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are all things we can practice. Right? To anybody, to everybody who wants to be, to to help strengthen the life of the church. Pick it up from Paul. This is the way he did it. Right? And this is, this is important for us to understand. First, Philippians 1.1. 1, 1, Be a born servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that's how we are. So if we just simply attend church, I am a church attendee. I am a church member, whatever that means. That's not the point. The best thing to be is, you know what? I am a born servant of Christ first. There's a lot of difference between being a born servant of Christ and being a church member and an attendee. What's that? Nothing. Right? Really. So it really, really tells you very, very, very little. You know, uh, we, what, what is that? Nothing. But when a person is a born servant, there is a tremendous sense of commitment. Why am I doing this? Because I want to. Right? It, it's not for any monetary reason. Why am I going to India? Because I'm paid extra. Nope. Why am I here? Because you pay me to come. Nope. I'm just a born servant of the Lord. That's it. You see, that's the, that's the difference. Because once you are a born servant of the Lord, you go and you serve the Lord wherever He sends you. And off you go. Right? 
That, that's what it is. So Friday, Saturday, long days, long program this week over I was Indian Embassy this week. Last week was very, very, uh, you know, man, look, look at it. And you know what? Well, I'm here. Why not? Seriously, why not? Because this is what it means to be a born. Now, I don't know whether you ever see yourself. Am I really a born servant of the Lord? A lot of people. I'm a Christian, yes. I'm a baptized believer, yes. But am I a born a servant? Will that make a difference? Huge difference. That is a challenge. Because if I'm a born servant, then the Lord is my master. I cannot say what I want I do, cannot do whatever I want. I have to obey the Lord. I am under orders. Just like St. Julian. I'm a man under orders. I understand. I am going to be a born servant. That is how Paul was to the people. Now, this, this man is a, it's, it's, it's a high mighty apostle. Now, he sees himself. I'm, I'm a born servant. I think that is just absolutely wonderful. Can we become that? Right? So this is, this is important. Uh, then, then this, um, in America, there is a short story. I don't know whether you like short stories. Uh, short story is a very difficult skill to cultivate. And uh, it's a very, very, very tough uh, thing. We have very few sh- good short story writers. There was a lady called Jay Lewis. And uh, she... She's a, she's a, you know, she's a little bit one of those better skilled writers. Not, not as popular over here. You don't really read her. Short stories is a very uh, difficult uh, skill to develop. You tell a short story in a very short while, and the ending is always surprising. And it's not easy to write stories like that because you honestly think, ah, it's going to be following to the conclusion. Long stories, you know the obvious. The butler did it. But this one, will surprise you. You don't know who did it. And that is skill. And she wrote a story about how when she was a, when she was a very poor family, and it's over 50 years ago, you know, in the South. And America is still very divided, by the way, between the South and the South. There's still a real problem that side. And she was, she was there, and she remembered a time when it was a very poor family. And, uh, you know, sometimes prisoners work gangs. Uh, literally, they, they, they chain them. And then they take them out to work in a certain area. And that's what it is. And then they came to the place there. And uh, so she remembered how the mother said, we are going to feed them. And so the, the little girl looked at mom and said, how? We, are, we barely have enough. And she said, no, we must do this. And so she said, you know, you never know who you might be entertaining angels unawares. And so she did this. The mother said, you could, okay, we're going to serve. One little tin of lemonade, put water. That's it. Everybody has those little tin cup, that's it. So make two pots of lemonade. One. Two, two loaves of bread, tuna fish, that's all they have, and then let's wipe up. And so, uh, so she came and told the, 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 the person, the guard there, and, uh, and so it said, well, um, we, we should be lining up to uh, the food uh, she said, no, you please sit down. And the prisoners were all blacks. And so here was a white lady. Please sit down. And she served them sandwich, tuna sandwich, lemonade. And prisoners had never experienced anything like this before. And she, she said, you know, I remember there was deathly silence. Nobody said a brief word. So the end of the very simple meal, tuna sandwich with a small tin of lemonade. That's all they had. So that's all they have. 
And so one of the, the leaders, one of the people, he just came up and says, Ma'am, in my lifetime, I always hope that I might one day meet an angel. And I think I have today. You see, that's what we want to be. And that's what we want to be. And mother said, nope, that's not how you should see it. You never know. One of them could be an angel. We've just served an angel. That's a short story skill. Yeah. You turn it around. You never know that maybe you serve an angel today. We don't know who, but you never know. See, that's what being a servant is all about. You know, so when you serve somebody, you don't know that person, just like Abraham. You know, the angel of the Lord came along to the house down there. Let me make you a little morsel. Let me make you something. Fettered calf was killed. Listen, let me give you something. He personally did it. And so he entertained angels unaware. That's, that's the skill of it all. What does it mean to be a servant? And, and Abraham bowed himself to the ground like a servant. Let me wash your feet like a servant. Let me attend to you. Let me serve you as a servant. That's how it should be. And every time we serve, whatever ministry we have, be that servant. You don't order people around. You just serve. That is the challenge. Why can't we just serve? Now, this is important. So when Pastor Chris picks me up at the airport and fetches me all over the place, I, every time I tell him, I want to say thank you. I do not take for granted he has to, or he needs to, but he does it. And you know, I want to appreciate that. That's, that's what it means. That's what it means to be a servant. That's what we learn. You see, it's important. We learn from our leaders. Leaders must set this example first. The leader that will be blessed by God to be a blessing to the church, that leader must first and foremost, right now as you begin, Paul, a servant, a born servant. With Timothy, he raised up the level of Timothy. Who is Timothy? Nothing, nobody compared to Paul. And yet very graciously. Okay, Timothy, I want to tell you, they're all the Philippians, I want to say, Paul, Timothy, both born servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to make a church outstanding, practice first, principle number one. Okay, but let's look at further and see how this works out. Two, there was a man of prayer. We see this in Acts 16 already. People talk prayer. People don't actually pray. Because if you are a person of prayer, your life will change. It's easy, you know, to talk is cheap. People talk. A lot of people don't pray. Now, ever there was a person of prayer, now you, his, his life is not, not many, many people are familiar with his life. John Welsh was a man of prayer. They call him, today we call him a mystic. Because when he prays, he would get up early in the morning and he would seek the Lord in prayer. Scottish man. Right? And, and he would be in prayer. It doesn't matter what, how cold it is in old Scotland. He would say, God has given me a burden. And he would talk to God in prayer. You know, as, as, if, as if the Lord is talking to him. So the wife would say, who are you talking to? And she would talk. I mean, literally talk to the Lord. Sometimes on his knees, a lot of times on his knees, a lot of times walking. And people will always say, whenever he walks like that, they can see a glow about him. And they cannot figure out why this glow is always there with him. Not exactly like that of Moses, but the glow was so obvious. A man of prayer. How do you know what kind of prayer? I give thanks. 
You see this all the time. Romans 1.8 is there. I give thanks. 1 Corinthians 1.4, it is there. I give thanks. The person of prayer, the first word, 1.8 Romans. First, by choice, I give thanks. If you want to give, if you really want to be a person of prayer, don't just say, God bless Bethel. Say it with all your heart. God, thank you for what you're doing at Bethel. I, I thank God for Pastor Chris. I thank God he has got a good wife supporting him from the LD. Why important to me? Because she came from Bethany. That's so important. So it's just important to me how I, how I see her grow. And I want, her, I want, I want to just say, one, so when I write to both of them, I really thank God for the both of you. I thank God. It's so important. I just caught up with, 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 with Auntie Lillian here, uh, Uncle William. I always see her, always joy. So why it's so important? You know, something that we want to really, really, really thank God for. There, there we go. Right? And so she just shared with me. He says, well, God, I don't know whether I should go for the operation or not. But if I, this operation is not successful, I'm going to be blind. And, well, I'm going to trust you. Well, that's what it is. That's what praying is. You don't tell God. You don't make bargains with God. You just simply, I'm going to trust you. And you know what? At the end of it all, you just thank God. That's what prayer is. So we don't thank God enough. In the petitions list, over flooded. The Thanksgiving department only once, or one, once in a while. Uh, so no need to have too many angels looking after that section because nobody there. Millions of prayers. Always give me, give me, give me. We don't know how to say thank God. We should really. Look, you, know, you want to see a person with thanks him? You see it all over the place. The person is just thankful. You know, why not? So today we, we had a little bit of a light lunch with uh, Pastor Chris, a person who was a server. And why did we just all out? You know, we just, we've been here before. And you know, you're always such a, you always serve with such joy. A humble server. And she says, wow, thank you so much. Why can't we just say thank you? Why can't we say thank you? I mean, seriously. That's, it, it's important for us. You know, I think we really want to learn how to say thank you rather than not. Right? Now, th these, are, these are vital things that we really seriously must consider. I thank God. That's a man of prayer. A man of prayer who can pray and sing and give thanks to God in, at midnight. And most of us, what do we do if we cannot sleep at night? We pace around the room, watch TV. Internet serve. You can't call people at midnight. I hope you don't. Why can't we praise and give thanks to God instead? Lord, thank you. Right? I mean, really, every day we think we, we should really be filled with thanksgiving. With joy. That's the kind of, of leadership we want to provide. And once you are like that, you know, it's electrifying. You help other people tend to be like that. That's how it is. That's how it works. And if we are not, we also pass negativity around. As you look at the messages in the book of Exodus in 3 and 4, and this, this Sunday 5, you watch. The level of negativity is so strong in Moses. God has to kill him out of that. Let's share negativity. Let's recognize it for what it is. It's unbelief. It's a lack of faith. Always criticize somebody, condemn them. Always speak against them. That is not of the Lord. And you ask, how come God doesn't want to use me? Obvious reasons. Why cannot God bless? Obvious reasons. That is not the way it should be. Thanksgiving instead. Right? So this is something that we want to see. And so this is very obviously a man of prayer. As a friend, he says, I want to tell you what's happening to you. A friend who keeps in touch. That's what it is. Right? I want to share with you what's happened to me. I'm in prison right now. But listen, I have been vindicated. Everybody in the Praetorian Guard now knows that my prison, my, my chains are because of Christ. 
See, keeping in touch. And a lot of times, we just don't know how to share with people the things of the Lord. Right? You know, what do we, what do we talk about? When we get together, what do we talk about? To me, I mean, nobody wants to talk to me except with the Lord, right? which is I'm happy for. But most times when people talk, they are not in fellowship. It's for gossip. And I am not interested. I'm really not interested. And I know, it will be talk. How are you talking? When it comes to me, everybody keep quiet. Why should we, why should our conversation not be, not be wholesome? Why, should, why can't it be wonderful? Why can't it be good? Why can't we be filled with love? Right? Now, this is important for us. I think that is something that we want to, to look at. So here is a person who is a friend, right? And he's a person who exhorts people. He's a person who is an example. He says, well, I want to tell you my example. This is what I was like. Chapter 3. He says, I count all these things but done. See, be an example. Sir. That is what we should look for. This is what we want our future leaders to become. This is the kind of person you want to be. And it's not easy. And yet, it is very necessary. Is it possible? It's only through years and years of constant practice that you can do this. And of course, in Philippines, as a counsellor, as a one who, is an, who appreciates. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's very obvious. Now, I want to go into you, with you, to look at how he actually prayed. And this is something that's really, really, really quite uh, amazing for him to pray as he did. Well, let's look up the prayer in Philippians 1. And uh, this is something that we all must pray for. Remember, Philippians is a wonderful uh, uh, you know, epistle to study. And he says, this I pray. Okay, now this is something, but let's look at it. Look at it, what he is able to. Uh, that's very, very obvious. Right? The spirit of thanksgiving, of joy, of love is there. You can only pray as you are. The person you are will determine how you pray. If you are a person who is a thankful spirit, you will always say, I thank God. But if you are not able to, the soul tells you the person you are, you don't know how to give thanks. You don't have a thankful spirit. If you don't have a heart of love, you don't have a spirit of love, you can never pray this prayer. I can tell you this. Because you don't even understand what it's all about. Be careful. The spirit of negativity is a very deadly and dangerous one. And it's present everywhere. Well, on Sunday, I will be explaining this quite a bit. And uh, we'll see how this works out the spirit of negativity. We've got to fight the spirit. Now, look at Paul's prayer instead. But let's take a look, right? And so, in verse 8, he says to the people, God is my witness. How greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. The affection here is the word compassion. Compassion is another word for love. And look at this prayer, 9, 10, 11. Three verses only. But, it, you know, you, I can take a whole hour just explaining these three verses. But we, we don't have the time. But let me just very briefly outline some of these things for you. Take a look at this thing here. I think this is absolutely wonderful. <clears throat> okay? So this is how we ought to pray. Look at verse 9. This I pray. Now, this is where the Philippian church, remember, very little time to develop the church, personally. So what is left behind? Obviously, the impact and the impression of Paul, Silas, and there. These are people who are prayer. These are people who are full of thanksgiving. These are people who are deeply committed. These are servants of God. These are faithful people. You know what? They pick it up. That's what it is. That's how you pick up. That's how kids learn. Yeah. Kids learn when they see faithfulness, they follow. That's how it works. And if they don't have anything to look at, to, to follow after, they follow the old path. 
Watch out. Your parents, your children will be like you. And if they are not faithful, neither will they be. You're not thankful, neither will they be. They're not people, you're not a person of prayer, neither will they be. And they, you're going to affect your children, no matter how you look at it. Right? So it's not, okay, I'm praying for my son, or I'm praying for my daughter, and I'm going to pray for my children. It's not how it works. It's just simply because who you are, what you are, first and foremost. Right? Well, let's take a look at how he prayed. And he says, and this I pray. Now, that is an important thing. And in, in verse, uh, uh, verse 9, and this I pray. Now, this is important. See, sometimes we take for granted that we are uh, you know, just, okay, we pray. We don't even know whether God will hear and answer prayer. But this is how Paul prayed. And he said, and this I pray, that's your love. See, now this is important. See, we, we must pray towards some definite goals. So two sets of goals were here. I pray that you might be, I pray that this might happen. They call this a hina clause kind of a thing here. You see, most of us pray in blank, Lord bless you. Where are you going with that blessing? What are you looking for? Now, this is absolutely important. How do we pray? And this is something that we want to really, really be impacted. The first thing that he wanted to pray about, verse 9, they pray that your love may abound more and more. Wow, so that is the first thing. You see, so obviously that was there. That love was there. It was so obvious. Number one, Lydia, look at the love that was shown. Paul, come and stay in my house. My house is yours. Now, a lot of people cannot do that. Lydia could. Philippine, the, the J, right? We don't know who his name is. Tended to Paul's wounds. Fed him. In, listen, let me look after you. How many wardens do you know will look after the... You, you won't. You can't be bothered with them. That's what it is. Right? So we, we are seeing something really wonderful here. We're seeing which is very, very obvious. How can we do this? That love was already there. Obvious. Right? So if the love is not there, no point praying for it to increase. It's not there. The question is, is it there? Then we can pray for love. You see, love can be very, very stagnated. Or it can abound. It can increase. If it's not there, no point praying for increasing. Please get it in. Remember, love is the fruit of the Spirit of God. So when you pray for love, that work has already begun. The Spirit of God has worked. Now, if the love is not there, you can be sure of one thing. The Spirit of God has not worked in your life. So what is this love? It's very obvious. Let Bethel be a church full of love. Can it be done? It's up to you. Right? It's really up to you. You'll find that there's some people who are loving, there's some people who can't be bothered. It's up to us. Me, I just want to be filled with the Lord's love. That, that's so absolutely vital. And that's how it should be. Right? And it's something that is, you know, it's something that you really, really want to look at. And that, that is absolutely vital. The sense of love that is there. Okay? I, I really hope you, you will see this. And I, I think that's really important. Where I created a Pines 2 uh, group, you know, mostly for kids. 13, 14, 15, 16 year old kids. This new, new class that I wanted to, to, uh, to run with. About 50 of them. And immediately, someone, one of the, one of the parents, not even one of the parents, and so and the person said, uh, Pastor, I, I told him, We're gonna, I'm going to teach you how to read the Lord's Word. 
Immediately someone said, Pastor, I, let me give you a study Bible for everyone. One study Bible, $60 times 50. Would you give that? And one of them, they're not your children. Would you give that? That's it. $3,000. No, I, I said no. The person said, ask, give somebody else to give to me. So we bought the, we bought the Bible and gave to everyone. That's what we want to do. People need to understand. This love to increase more and more. So I had to tell people, stop! The same thing we have with special needs kids. You know, we have got special needs in our children. In our, you know, we, we are coming, a few of them. And it's really, really heartbreaking to see them. That's so wonderful. For every book we produce, it's free. It's given. That's how it is. People just give. You never know. So Auntie Maureen passed away. She's been the one who's supporting the printing of my books all these years. And someone came up and stopped up and said, Pastor, I, I'm going to take over. Now, she's not a rich lady. It just said, but this is what I want to do. That's what it is. That's what love is. It will. You see, when you pray for this love, you question, what do you do with this love? See, most of us like to be loved. You know, love me. Uh -uh. This is love to improve, the love of the Lord, to increase more and more. Maybe we should make that prayer for battle. Do you see this love more and more? Or is this stagnated love? It starts with somebody. Remember, Paul was there, Silas was there. They already loved the Lord very obviously. They're willing to suffer for the Lord. That's love. Isn't it? And there are many, many, many stories like that. It's so wonderful to see people offer that sense of love that is there. And I think one of the most amazing people who have served the Lord is showing some what love really is, is a man called Paul Brand. This was a very extraordinary surgeon. You know, and she, he trained in England. Now, this is, he was offered twice Hunterian Fellowship, which means to say that he was a distinguished surgeon from England. Twice offered that. So, lectureship at that level. What was his area of specialization? He operated on the lepers. And I'll tell you something, he will never make any money out of that. Where? India. They are totally people where nobody cares about them. They are worse than the low class. But he devoted his entire life to that. At Velour. That place is still there, by the way. At Velour. And it became a leading leprosy center. What else did he do besides that? And I was amazed to know what he did. So now he's helped, able to help people, uh, surgery, help them to not lose their nerves completely. He researched all the time, constantly asking. I was pretty amazed when he saw, why are your feet not being healed? Then he realized, why? You know why? Because you're wearing the wrong shoes. So he called up Bata and told them, listen, let's work together. I want shoes to be made for these lepers. Now, how are you going to do that? The Bata said, what are you going to do? So I will study the use of rubber. What kind of insole you must have? Because you can walk, because they will crack. The, no, we're going to help you to build shoes that are designed especially for these lepers. Why would he do that? Love. Then after they are healed, remember, there's probably the leprosy, it leaves scars on the face. You know what he went on to learn? Cosmetic surgery. 
he would put back the eyebrows on the lepers so that they don't look ghastly. How, who's going to pay for all that kind of stuff? In Singapore, one plastic job. Korea, plastic capital of the world. Plastic surgery of people. People every... I mean, they, they will have all kinds of things. Make my neck longer. Make my neck shorter. Make, and they, people are willing to spend any amount of money. The famed surgeon that he was, he had hardly anything. That's it. You know, he was a builder too, by the way. He built wards. He built study centers. He built a place for the lepers who have no jobs. Come and work here. That's what love is. It's not feeling. It's really caring for the worst possible, poss possible person. That's what it is. If, if you love those that like Jesus, if you love those who love you, what's that? The Gentiles will do the same thing. The bad people also do the same thing, don't they? No. I think that is what it is. I don't know whether you know. How many of you have flown into O'Hare Airport in Chicago? No? You've been there? Do you know why it's called O'Hare? Why was it called O'Hare Airport? For whom was it named? Very few people know what it is. So I've been there. Do you know the one who actually did this? Now, that's interesting. Because it's named after a person who was actually the lawyer of the famous, notorious gangster called Al Capone. O'Hare. Oh, this guy, oh, since you spring me out of prison all the time, let me reward you. His house is the whole block. What a block. And he was wondering, wondering, now. I have all this money. How am I going to face my son? So he turned on Al Capone. And then he said, I cannot do this anymore. So he stopped. And of course, he was gunned down. But he, when he was killed, he redeemed himself. The son looked at his father with pride. Second World War came. Son O'Hare, fighter pilot, and he was out. He reported back, my fuel tank is leaking. Report to come back. Come back immediately. Don't risk. So he came back. As he flew from the clouds, he saw a whole swarm of Japanese mosquitoes. You know, I mean, they're not small. I mean, the zeros kept coming in, and they were fighting. And he took them on. One person shot down five planes, and he was shot himself. And the Japanese was annoyed. And so he finally landed up, injured, of course. Plane was gone, but you know he saved that big ship from being sunk by the Japanese. And so the government honored them, the memory of the father and son, and called it the O'Hare Airport. They learned one principle: it is in service of country, of faith, and of being able to risk one's life to do that which is good and right. And so the O'Hare Airport was named after both father and son for what they did for the country. That's something that we all need to do. That's what love is. Right? Now, Lydia can say, well, thank you very much. I now I'm saved. Bye. See you sometime, Paul. Nope. Come into my house. It's yours. Anytime you're here. Not that he stayed there very long because he was kicked out of the region. But that's what it is. That's what love is. The challenge is to see that love more and more increasing. That's what we want to do. You know, I think this is important. Right? So I was asking Pastor Chris, he said, uh, listen, uh, you will be the old age care people, you know. Um, 
invite them for the an anniversary dinner. He said, yeah, I, I, I'm going to do that. I'm like, that's great. I was up in the hospital over in, the, in, in Myanmar one day, and uh, this was a small uh, mission hospital. It's only like about 100 beds, that's it. And, uh, you know, the doctors do everything there. One day they are doing orthopedic surgery, next day they are removing cataract, next day they are delivering babies, same doctor. No specialization, they're all MBBS, that's it, they got to do everything. So you are a surgeon, you are a doctor, you are a physician, and then on Friday, they do mental health as well. They were all so overworked. So I said to them, listen, uh, Saturday, you all work. He said, well, that Saturday is free. So I'll be very happy to go out on a picnic, rent a place, have a wonderful day. Said, really? So of course. Go ahead, do it. The 200 of us, you know, I said, yeah, let's do that. Why not? Do something. Love is not a feeling. It is an action. Do something that tells you this is real love. Then you can pray. This love may abound. Abound! Not just grow. Abound! More and more. That's what it is. Perisuo is a word that describes something in the mouth. My cup runs over. That's word. That's the kind of love we want to see. You know, we do something because it's the right thing to do. And this is Paul's prayer. Look at that. Okay? But in knowledge and in discernment, don't love stupidly. Right? Love when there is discernment and in knowledge. Right? This is absolutely important. Don't get caught up in a scam. Scam is foolish. This is not what we want to be. So there we go. In love and in knowledge that is there, okay? And uh, that we may approve the things that are excellent. That we may be sincere and without offense. Now, there we go. That is all stemming out of this love here. That you, love and, and that you may, uh, may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now, that is the challenge. You see, you can be sincere, but you can be very offensive. Right? So one brother or sister was told, you know, sister, we tell him, Mom, brother is disturbing me again. What did he do? He called me ugly. So he told us, I, I told you not to say sorry to your sister. And so he said it sincerely, as sincerely as I'm sorry you are ugly. You see, that's the problem. You, many people excuse it, but I'm sincere. Yeah, you may be sincere, but are you also offensive? Because if you are sincere and you're offensive, it's not part of prayer. Let me be sincere and not offensive in my sincerity. Now, that is important. You see, that's what we should be praying about. That is a kind of depth of prayer, of concern that we should be concerned about. This is the kind of stuff that we ought to look at. Right? Now, we go on further. And then, you know, that being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Now, that is, you see, that we look at. So, that is a prayer, that love part of it, the sincerity without offense, and then fruits. If we are not bearing fruit, then what are we doing? And it's important. Our life must be filled with fruit. Who wants to plant a fruit tree that does not bear fruit? You know what I mean? I, I had a, a banana plant. I don't know what in that plant it was so fruitful. We had to give that away because it was just impossible. The tree is very short. It's only about this tall. The bananas are huge. I mean, you've not seen any of the bananas. Your the bananas over here, over here is only half the size of the, the one that I have. And it will bend the whole plant downwards, you know. So we have to prop up that plant. So much work. Just you know. And because we also don't eat the banana. Just so one day, took the banana thing here, went to weigh it and see how heavy that comb was. 
one. 35 kg. What? what? You can barely carry it. Well, it was really, really tough. So I always gave to all the neighbors. So I said, better, why don't I give you a banana? Why don't I give you the plant? <laughs> Then you can have your own bananas. Why, why just give, the, give, the banana, give you the plant? They say, really? Yes, of course. You know, let's do something. I, know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm more than happy to give away the plant. And then, and then, and then, you want to give up? I say, no, no, no need. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is what it is. Fruit. We all understand. What is the point of being a Christian? I got no fruit to share, you know, to, to bear, to speak of. What's your fruit? Look at Paul's life, and you see all these things are fruit. Right? Being a servant, serving, being thankful, being able to pray, being able to, to be there for people. That is what it is all about. Do whatever we need to do in order to be where we ought to be. Right? You know, a lot of people assume, well, you know, you, di you didn't ask for me. Why should I ask for you if you don't display any of these things here? A lot of us think that we are pretty good. The reality is in our life. That is important. How we see ourselves and what our other people see are not always the same. And that's what we want to do. Can we be this? Right? This is what makes a church. First, you have you have uh, uh, the leaders. Paul, obviously, was there. The Silas was there. But you know, soon they had to leave. What remains behind is the seed they have sown. The seed they have sown will produce the fruit that you see in them, in the, Phili in the Philippines. You see, that's kind of seed. See, if it grows on good ground, wow, it is amazing. Right? But remember, Weeds, you don't need to sow weeds, they will come. Uh, if there, anybody who has a garden, you understand those weeds. Uh, no matter what, it is hard to just pull out the weeds. And weeds got many types of weeds, different, different types of weeds. They were there. No matter what good grass you want to plant, uh, the weeds will come and you just, uh, and it takes a lot of work, patient work, every day to just keep on doing it. It looks clean for a while, and then before it comes right back, oh, that's it. Pretty big. How do you know uh, uh, the garden has been probably weeded? The birds will come because all the soil loose, the birds are having a wonderful time. So you're benefiting the birds. The birds are so happy because the worms keep coming up too. Listen, it takes a lot of effort to be that fruitful, to take away the weeds. But that's what we should be. So I, I'm really going to challenge us all to be seriously consider as we look at it. Say, Let's do something special for the Lord. We, it's taken us, we're 24 years now. It's enough time, right? This is a young church. It's just 24 years old. Some people get married already. <laughs> now we are ready to start up your own family. Okay, 24 years. It's taken us 24 years. What are we after 24 years? If we are still grumpy, grouchy, in negative zone, we are nowhere, nowhere any close to what God wants us to be. Be that person. And absolutely important. Right? I mean, this is important. I mean, you, 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 what, that's, that's how it works. And if we can start here, and we can look forward, you know, so when, when, you know, we can look forward to a great silver jubilee next year. Yeah. This is just year, one year shy of silver jubilee. Wow. Bethany will be celebrating its golden jubilee in five years' time. And I'm gearing towards that. Five years. And you know, it's just wonderful. Well, I don't know whether I'll be alive, but I'm going to try to be there. Yep. Okay, but you know, that's what it is. I am I'm not going to work towards 75. No. 105. Thank you. You know, I just want to be with, I want to go home to be with the Lord, but I want to go home with the Lord at least bearing some fruit. I don't want to go empty-handed. I really don't want to go empty-handed. Now, you stand before the Lord tonight. How would you go? What would characterize your fruit? Otherwise, we're going to go to the Lord with ends which are empty. Nothing to show for it. 
Is there prayer? Is there love? Is there service? Why? We're so caught up with ourselves that we don't know how to live for the Lord. Let's not do that. Okay? Think about these things here. And, and may the Lord challenge us to be the church we were meant to be. Right? So we, before you know, we're coming in, in September already, uh, you know, Auntie is thinking of the what mooncakes to buy for you all. So we've already made the booking with Chang. Okay, we are going to pick these boxes. You say, oh really? Yeah, okay. Even before this, they, they, they show, but so we have made them. Yeah, of course you haven't made them. Yeah, but we're going to book a week ahead of time so that we, uh, we can book over there. That, that, that's how it should be. Right? That's, there's no question about a love for Bethel from Bethany. The people want to be here for you. You know, we, we are grateful for the fact that you return that love. But, you know, learn to care for each other too. It's easy to care for people outside. It's hard to care for people inside. It always is. It's always easier to live, love an outsider, not an insider. Isn't that such? One day there was a lady grieving. Husband died. And then the minister went down there and he described this man. So he, she whispered to her son, go, go and check the coffin. Is that really your dad? See, so sometimes in eulogy, wonderful words are used until the family, hey, wait here. I didn't know this person was like that. And that's so sad. It should be. Let's, let's really be the church. Let's be the believer, the servant of God. We were meant to be all the, all the time. Okay? Well, let's pray together. Our Father, we pray that you will teach us and challenge us to consider what it means to be the kind of person that you meant us to be. We thank you for the example of Paul, how outstanding he was, how consistent he was in his life, in his ministry, to churches all over. And we pray, Father, that you will continue to bless us with your word, so that our hearts are stirred, impacted, impressed to attempt greater things for you. And we pray, Father, that you will begin this work within our hearts tonight. Create within our hearts a, a, a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of desires to pray, a heart of love. And we pray that you'll hear this our prayer to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you all for being here. I'll see you all tomorrow night. Right?